Um, what are we doing? Just talking about some bikes, these cool. ones. Hello and welcome to the round table for the pink bike value field test. We've got five bikes under 3,500 bucks and this is where we give them their final say as we compare their performance. So we have the YT Capra, the Specialized Status, the Vitus Mythique, the GT Sensor and the Marin Rift Zone. Five bikes, some of them are mixed wheeled, some of them are 29. They all kind of do similar things though maybe some are more travel than others. Let's start with climbing. Dario, of these bikes, which of these bikes would you say is the best climbing bike? I think I would give best climber to the Vitus personally. I liked how balanced it felt front to rear. T to be fair to all of these, the climbing geo is quite good on all of the bikes except for the status. That just has like slack seat angle, kind of extreme geo. It doesn't really have a rear end, it's just right. You're, you're, you're sitting the, on the, the axle, hub, yeah. Much, yeah. Um, but I think that Vitus climbed quite nicely. Uh, uh, you know, good character there. Uh, componentry was seemed a little biased towards the climbs as well. Like it's the lightest weight build. I don't think that necessarily played into how good of a climber it was, but for me, I think that would be the choice. And for you, Cuz? Yeah, I'm gonna second that. If I was gonna go on a long all day pedal, I think the Vitus would be my choice. Um, yeah, kind of does everything you want a trail bike to do. No funny business. Well, not to hold you up on this, we did speak a lot about the Capra and how it was actually a very versatile bike. Mm -hmm. It could do a bit of everything. Also has a bit more travel. It's also a mullet bike, so smaller rear wheel isn't necessarily that great on the climbs. Like, and what, was, stuff. and what was the worst climbing bike then, would you say? Probably a status. I mean, not even probably. I think it is a status just because of the position that you're in, how long the front end is, how slack yeah. it is, and your seat angle. Um, it has yeah. good traction. Like, you can get up some things with it, but it's a lot more work. I think at the end of the day, that's going to be the most taxing to do a big bunch of climbs. And so if we looked at, you know, some, some people do fire road winches, some people do like long undulating terrain. Which bike would you say was the most efficient climbing on the smoother stuff? Not necessarily all out grip, but if you wanted to really motor along. I think the GT. Yeah, it's gonna be the sensor. Yeah. Just kind of a little fir more firm off the top. When you stand up and sprint, it doesn't feel like it's bobbing and wasting energy. It does sacrifice some traction because of that trait, but yeah. for somebody that wants their bike to feel that kind of more snappy or more efficient, that sensor does it. And on the other end of the spectrum, Dario, if we're talking all out grip and you're trying to get up something low traction, maybe slightly chunky, some stepped kind of climb, what do you think you'd lean towards? I'd say status or rift zone. Yeah. Even though the status has kind of like weird geometry for climbing, like it does offer a lot of grip. The rift zone does as well, um, but the status obviously has a lot more travel. So there's just like more to offer there yeah. in like weird steppy climbs. Yeah, I'd probably go rift zone just for, personally, just because of the more balanced feel of the bike. But the yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting pitting them head to head. I think you're gonna have some strengths and some. I tried to do some like weird tech climbs on the status and like you can figure it out, but it's a completely different ball game than yeah. like the other bikes. So that's how the bikes climb in context of one another. But how do they descend? Well, to give a bit of comparison, you guys did do some timed runs on these bikes. So Kaz, which was your fastest bike? My fastest was actually a tie between the Marin Riftstone and the GT Sensor. Oh, really? So, which is interesting. We should set the stage and explain the, the trail a little bit. It's one we've used in the past for testing, but it's a not even not that steep, but kind of a, a how to describe? It? It's a about a three minute track, and more it trends downhill, but you do have to pedal a fair bit. You can't just let off the brakes and get to the bottom. You do have to throw in some pedal strokes. No huge hits, but some faster, kind of chunkier bits. So something you'd find on a normal trail bike trail. My fastest was the rift zone by just a little bit. Uh, I think because we were riding all of these like early in the testing period, once I got used to the status, it would be my fastest, but it was just a second behind the rift zone. And so if you help me out here to understand, because the Marin actually has 30 mil less travel than something like the Capra. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's because of the course and it suited that sort of more efficient, maybe poppy up feel of a short travel bike? Or do you think it's because Actually, for whatever reason, the YT Capra just isn't a particularly fast bike. The Capra was my third fastest, so not like, and it was only another second slower. The Capra maybe is a bit slower because on this track, because of the mixed wheels a little bit, like yeah. you're getting caught in holes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's move away from just all up, you know, timed runs. Guys, what bike did you feel most comfortable on? Not necessarily did you enjoy, but you know, what did you feel yeah. safest, most secure on? For descending, that'll be the status. Yeah, yeah I think that one. The, the Rift Zone is close too, like I felt, really comfy on the rift zone and that's more of like an all-rounder but for just pure downhill performance i think the status is one i would drop into the steepest trails and feel the most at home and yeah. which of those two did you enjoy more 
again, it kind of really depends what trails I would be on. Like I really like the Rift Zone and that would be like the Rift Zone I could have for my everyday bike. Just want to do some like after work laps and cruise around where the status, you really do have to find those trails that really meet its geometry or that match its geometry basically. Yeah. And how about for you, what would you say is the most capable descender? I mean, again, same as Kaz, like depends on the trails. Um, I took the status out on some trails I hadn't ridden before that were pretty gnarly and had a great time. Uh, so it like, it totally fit that bill in that circumstance. But I think if I were riding like fast, flatter tracks, it would be one of the less confident feeling bikes just because that front end grip is so hard to get on like washy stuff. Um, and in that case, I'd go with something like the Rift Zone or the Mythic. Now we mentioned the GT in terms of its climbing capabilities. We haven't yet really mentioned that Vitus too much. Was it's, it kind of solid mid pack or was it? Yeah, I think it's quite middle of the road. It like does both things quite well. I think it was held back a little bit by spec in this case, like that fork wasn't as good as some of the others and maybe made us feel a little bit sketchier on some descents. Yeah, but yeah, I liked how, like I like the traction that the Vitus had and I think that's a good, again, mid pack, mid all rounder. It kind of, it doesn't maybe shine as bright as the other ones because it doesn't have a standout characteristic, but I think that's actually a good thing because mm -hmm. it's so predictable and so easy to ride. So it is just kind of like, you just hop on it, just does its thing and you almost forget about it. But realistically, that should be the goal of a lot of bikes. Like you don't want to have to think about your bike all the time, think about what it's going to do around every corner. So the Vitus was kind of a really intuitive to ride. Now, all of these bikes are pretty good value. There is a small caveat with how we approach this because that status 160 was 3000. They brought it down quite substantially, you know, to 2250, which is very, very, very good value. And in my mind, it would appear it's a standout in terms of value. Yeah, for sure. What you're getting on there, it's again, even at $3,000, it was a good value, but then once you yeah. knock a bunch off that price, it's a great value. It's hard to, I can't think of a bike off the top of my head that's that that equivalent parts package and performance. So I mean, that's kind of, for me, the standout winner for overall value. You know, I think you could argue that you get a really good bike with the Rift Zone for what is a significant amount more than the others, but it's hard to call that like a great value when something like the status exists. Yeah. And that Vitas too, we should mention, I think that's again, you know, yeah. at full full price, which I don't see it going on sale anytime soon, it's a brand new bike, but yeah. you know, $2,600, but that's another one that has a really good parts package. Mm -hmm. And so I think that would be the yeah. like second place standout for value. And what would you say would be the worst value bike? Uh, for me, the sensor is the one that I think just doesn't really have, it's, it really feels like more of an entry level budget bike rather than one that you could get and not have to do much to, you know, like it does work fine, but I think the parts kit is a little bit below even what I would expect on a $2,600 bike. Well then if we maybe take this from a slightly different angle, you have to buy one of these bikes for the, the prices that we have here and you had $500 to spend, mm -hmm. which bike do you think you could make the best bike overall for its RRP plus those sort of custom swap out parts that a lot of us go for anyway, irrespective, you know, we sometimes we see it with eight, $9,000 bikes. And we're standing there going, well, actually you'd want a different bar, or you'd want these tires, or you'd want this brake size. What, Dario, what for you do you think you'd be the best package of retail plus $500? Again, I'm gonna do a toss up between, no, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my idea. It's gonna be status or rift zone. I'm gonna say it's the Mythique and I'm gonna get a better fork. You stole my idea, but I think that is it. Like that, that, that even just with a different damper, yes. I think you could keep the fork yeah, potentially, yeah, yeah. Um, or, yeah, or sell that one and get a different, different fork. Um, but for 500 bucks more, I think that would be a screaming deal. Alternate answer, status, and I pay a professional welder to make it have a steeper C tube angle and longer chain stays. <laughs> for $500, that's a good deal. It's on a, a great deal. I don't know if I'll trust his work, but yeah. I mean, the Capra too, all these bikes, and that's the thing, if you do start with these bikes, they're great starting points. You don't yeah. really have to buy things right away. But if you do budget a little bit, you know, every single bike on test could, except for the, uh, the status, could benefit from different tires. Like the tread pattern of these tires is fine, yeah. but the actual compound is pretty hard. I think in one of my rod notes, it said tires sound like squeaky cheese because mm -hmm. on rocks, there's making this like rrr, rrr, noise and just kind of a sign, yeah. a sign that they're not the softest compound. I didn't realize in America, you didn't get cheese that didn't come in a can. But hey, what do you know? Learn something new every day. No, it doesn't come in a can, it's spray. We have spray <laughs> cheese. Yeah, yeah. It's aerosol. Yeah. Now with all these bikes, they each, I mean, there seemed to be a bit of a trend that the dropper seat posts were too short. Yep. Mm -hmm. But what were some component surprises that you actually thought, you know what, for a value bike, this really stood out and impressed me? Guys, starting with you. Yeah, I mean, I think overall, this would be our strongest batch of value bikes that we've ever had. No, no Alhonga brakes. There's no Alhongas, even like they had Tektros, but they weren't, they worked pretty well. And yeah. so there's nothing immediately that's you're like, I don't want to deal with this. So yeah. I think we've come to a really good place with geometry. Like in the past, we've had some that were really outliers in this. There's not many that are really 
um, need drastic updates. And then the parts in general are getting better. So you are seeing brakes that work. You're seeing yeah. tire tread that's good. Suspension even, you know, we had some stuff, there were some issues, but not like we've had in the past. So overall our strongest crop of value price bikes. Yeah. Dario, what was a pleasant surprise for you? I think similar, like Geo is good on all of these. I think that's like the one thing that like people have been harping on for years is like geometry is free. It might as well be good even on budget bikes. And in this case, like that's the case, we have that. You know, there's some weird geo with things like the status, like it's not a well-rounded bike necessarily, but it's really good at what it does. Um, yeah, all the brakes work. That's sweet. <laughs> Happy that's happening. I think we're like 50-50 on drivetrains right now. Yeah, that's you know? right. I'd say drivetrains is the biggest yeah. part, or like, biggest room for improvement there. Yeah, basically it just broke down, like the Shimano drivetrains were quite good at this budget and the SRAM ones were not. Yeah. There you have it. So that's a wrap up for this year's value bike field test. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget, you can go back to our YouTube channel or even on the Pink Bike homepage to check out all these reviews in longer length. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to you both for coming to Squamish and riding these trails and putting in the hard yards in the sunshine. You're absolute soldiers, both of you. Hard job, but someone's <laughs> got to do it. And thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Cheers. Mm.